change as you as you drift down, down, and down, and down. You're, going, you're probably only going to go down to 1,000 feet or 3,000 feet. So you guys know the deepest uh, human scuba divers uh, can go? It's like 300 Maybe feet. Maybe a few hundred, yeah. Yeah, 300 feet. So that's a maximum. You've got to have special, special gas mixture and lots of stuff. They're going down 10 times that deep. Well, how are the conditions going to change? What's going to, what's going to happen? Pressure increase. The pressure is going to increase. Temperature decrease. The temperature decrease decrease yeah there's no light and there's no light okay so so what do you what what is your adaptations going to be how are they going to how do they find food down there we talked about them finding these little tiny little tiny fish how are they going to find them sense of smell maybe um they don't have don't the know. yeah underwater smell is, is not going to be quick enough to, to to find you know moving schools of fish No idea. <laughs> well, what do you do? Let's just say you're here in the dark. What are you going to do to find anything in the dark? Oh, just reach out and touch it. Reach out and touch it. But they have tiny little flippers. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, oh, they have like big whiskers, right? Uh, whiskers is ab absolutely. They have they have some pretty impressive whiskers. I don't know if that's the scientific term. But... Well, yeah. They call them <laughs> they call them Fabrice, but you know okay. nobody knows what those close, are. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what I meant. <laughs> yeah. So here you can see, hi, here you can see their whiskers, and um, the whiskers, I don't have, have a sample here, the whiskers, another scientist at UC Santa Cruz, figured out how to put little tiny lights and cameras on, and they actually showed the, showed the elephant seals looking in the dark, and they, just like a mouse, you ever seen a mouse walk around, they can actually stick their whiskers out, yeah. so most of the time, and I don't know cats very well. I don't know if cats do that, but, but uh, they can they can actually stick the whiskers out, so they're they're out. The whiskers actually are a special shape. They're a little different than like a cat whisker, which is if you run your fingers on it, it's smooth. Elephant seal whiskers, if you run your fingers on it, it feels like a little tiny stack of beads. So there's, so there's variation. Scientists have taken those and attached them to a, a, a vibration measuring device, put it underwater, and moved it through the water. It turns out that that arrangement of beads actually has less vibration in the water, so they can move through the water more smoothly oh, than just a straight whisker. So their own movement isn't going to interfere, but if they feel, like Marco Polo, you feel that motion of water, they can actually sense that. Okay? So that's one of the ways. They actually, do, actually, I guess you could say the sense of touch, the, the feeling of motion in the water. And most, and actually, most importantly, you can also see in here. What do you? What else do you notice? Their eyes. Their eyes. Okay. Tiny, tiny pupil. Okay, but that's why is the pupil tiny? It's. Uh, it's well, actually, I don't know. Yeah. Where do we take I, this? Where do they take this picture? Oh, it's up high. Yeah. In the sun. Right. Yeah. So they go underwater. Oh, if you look carefully, you're just looking sideways. But if you look at this. How does this eye look different than our eye? He's stoned, look, clearly. Very, very stoned. Clearly. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> That's not in the textbook. <laughs> Actually, it's really hard to see. The pupil's still there. But what's missing? When you guys look in the mirror, in the, in the mirror at your eyes, what's missing yeah, the around white that? Iris. The iris. The white. Oh, the white. Oh. The right? It's got huge iris. Yeah. As a matter of fact, their eyes, A, are bigger than ours. And their iris is, a, is almost half the eye, and that means they can actually open. This is a, this wow. would be the size of the pupil if they're underwater wow. in the dark. Okay, human eye pupil can expand about 20 times. Elephant seal pupil can expand 400 times. Wow, that's right? crazy! So what's that going to do? Way more allow light. more light. Lots and lots and lots of light, which is important because underwater, um, the animals that that uh, give off bioluminescence don't do it. Uh, most mostly they don't do it. So this is a picture of a of a squid underwater. Okay, Tasty. in the eye of an elephant seal. What's the what's the, you guys know the name of the of the uh, part of the eye that actually absorbs the light and transmits it into an image? It's the retina. Very good. The retina. Our retinas have two main kinds of cells in them. Rod cells and cone cells, okay? Rod cells are, uh, allow us to adapt to different different light levels. Cone cells 
are uh, sensitive to certain colors. In human, we have three different colors. Do they um, have four? And say again? Do they have four? No, they actually have only two. Oh. What do you oh, think okay. those colors would be? Uh, blue and black? Blue and green. Oh, okay. Okay, blue okay. and green. So, so their eyes are very attuned to be, seeing, this, seeing this color, okay? So they're taking advantage of the fact that bioluminescence is a fact of life under there. And I, uh, there's, a, there's a great thing if you go on the NOAA website, it talks about bioluminescence, shows you some cool pictures. My favorite one is the animals that use it like a burglar alarm. If they're being chased by something, all of a sudden they're giving out huge pulses of light in hopes of attracting a bigger predator to eat the predator that's trying to eat them. So, so, uh, so they take full advantage of, of the bioluminescence.